YouTube, it's Brian Phillips. We've got the PA18 right here, 1.7 from FMS. Amazing, one of my favorites. If you don't have a budget for the Carbon Z Cub and you don't have the budget for a Draco, we understand, you're in good company. Also, this thing is a lot smaller, okay? But it's still big and it's still really good. And that's why we're gonna fly for you today and just wanted to give you guys a second look. Now, the other thing too is, if you decide you get this thing and you wanna put some big squishy pairs on here, 6.25 inches is what you're looking for, but there are spring-loaded suspension on it. Also, keep in mind, we added a feature, and that feature is thrust reverse, and here it goes. Throttle cuts off. Just like we've seen on other planes, it is really nice to have thrust reverse, especially if you have this thing on floats and you need to get away from the edge of your pond. So without further ado, here goes nothing. Take off flaps. This one here is equipped with a reflex. And this is a really good flying plane. Camera crew is gonna come over to the edge. If you guys haven't ever experienced the PA-18, get ready to experience a great plane. The PA-18 1.3 is always on our beginner list because it's been a really good plane. It's one that our son loves to fly. But if you guys are brand new to the channel or brand new to RC Aviation, this might not be a bad pick. The only thing that's tough about this is since it's not bind and fly, you do have to set up a radio system, but we're gonna help you with that right here on Brian Phillips RC. So if you guys haven't checked out our initial video, a little slip there as you can see, into a knife edge. Look at the ample power. We're gonna go sideways over the sun just to make the camera crew work. And then we're gonna bring it right back down. Our unbox build radio setup is before we did thrust reverse. So when we're done flying, we'll talk about how we set it up. It's very easy. And then also how to identify if your plane already has it or if you would need to add it. Now that being said, if you ever wanna add thrust reverse, using Spectrum gear, you can do that too. But what we're talking about is the Predator ESC, and that's gonna be the stock ESC that comes inside of this plane. And that's what's so nice about it, is that it's already installed. You just have to pull out the yellow wire. We're gonna let it fall on itself. Look at that. Crisp correction from the stabilizer. Full landing flaps now, we'll slow it way down. Look at this right overhead, right overhead, so sweet. And then hard on the sticks to get it to turn. Keep in the throttle when you're in full landing flaps like that. Kick the wings up there. You wanna just keep throttle on, guys. Okay, now into takeoff flaps. We'll let it relax into that. Out of the flaps all together. Just going out over the field. So you can always add the Avian ESC, but again, they're pretty expensive. And on a plane like this, my guess is you're not gonna wanna put that much money into it. And I wouldn't blame you, but at the same time, if you're buying this thing now as a plug and fly from FMS, follow the links in the video description below, and you might just get yours with your own yellow wire. All you have to do is take the mode button, or not the mode button, but what we would have set up in our Unbox Build Radio setup for switching between auto leveling, stabilizer, and off, you just set it to whatever mode you want. Like I've got mine locked in stabilized mode, okay? So I don't have auto leveling right now because I don't have any way to turn it on or off. But I do have thrust reverse on that channel, which is the gear channel. And all we did is reassign gear in channel select or channel assignment. To switch G, which is where I like to set it up. Right over the Eagle killing zone and then take off flaps, landing flaps right over the camera crew. Beautiful. So guys, the cool thing is really, really, really light wind over my right shoulder. We're going to bring it in for an inside pass. Really cool thing is coming up here in the next few weeks. We're going to be getting back to work on the pond, hard on the throttle as we approach the arc, the top of the arc on that pass. And then we'll be flying this thing, hopefully on floats right down here where this D6 dozer is. 
That of course belongs to our excavator crew. You can see the shadow coming up on the top of the hill there. This is gonna be where the dam is. That'll be the dam runway. You can see that hill is gonna be gone because that hill is just a bunch of dirt. Okay, let's see if we can get to the short grass. We'll show you some grass ops here. As you can see, the thing handles grass ops just fine. And our shadows for comparison, for size and scale. I love going down that hill and taking off. It's so much fun. Full landing flaps coming in now. Let's see if we can land on the hill. I'm sure we can. Yeah, we can. There it is, guys, right on the side of the hill. We'll get hard in the throttle, make it a touch and go. Then into the takeoff flaps only. We'll see if we can bring it right back down to our feet. And this is what's so cool about thrust reverse. You can stop on a dime, guys. Now, without squishy tires, and given that this has 6.25 inch rock hard, rock hard tires, grass hops are totally fine. But where you're gonna shine is obviously on the floats with the PA-18, okay? It's gonna make everything really heavy on the bottom, so it's gonna fly along and just be super scale looking and beautiful. And with that very mild dihedral, let's see if we can give a shot of the dihedral here. I'll bring it up on the runway. A little easier for us to see, but there's a little bit of dihedral on this. You can see on the shadow, it's exaggerated a lot, but that little teeny bit of dihedral just really makes this thing fly super stable. And I love flying this thing and it's super fun to be able to go into thrust reverse and just back right up to where you wanna take off. And look at the LEDs. Even in the day with that intense sunset, we've got perfectly good visibility. And also that helps a lot on short and shortening days at the end of your flying season. Get it up on the mains and then just fly it. Okay, out of the flaps. We're gonna go visit our buddies, ghosts, the fox, the eagle. Sounds like some sort of a Indian dance or something. Touch and went. We're gonna bring it over and then right back down. Keep it flying, keep that nose pointed down when you get close to the point of stall. You guys haven't seen this plane stall yet. Right down the runway. Let's stall it for you, but we're gonna do it way over here. Okay, so here we go. So, power off stall. <laughs> Just kidding, guys. That was a pretty bad stall. Okay, let's do a power on stall. Okay, so 50% throttle. Okay, pulling up on the elevator. A little bit more aggressive, a little bit more aggressive. That's the stall, guys, look at that. Look at that. That's the stall. See that power on stall? Finally. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a power off stall. And we are at seven and a half minute timer on 4S2200. We'll bring it right into the same position. This will be a power off stall, okay? So pulling back on the stick. And there it is, guys, look at this. Look at that thing. That's not auto leveling. That's just an inherently stable plane, okay? Out of throttle still. If it were dead stick, I could have landed the thing on the runway. Take off flaps now. Seven and a half minutes is a pretty good amount of time. Full landing flaps here. And even on the rock hard mains, we're doing okay. And at seven and a half minutes plus of flight time on 2200 4S, that is a lot of time and a lot of fun. Let's see if we can prop hang it almost on near dead battery. Yep. Yeah, well, you can prop hang it for a while if you want. That does pretty dang good. All right, I'm sure the camera crew didn't catch that because the focus probably screwed up with that blue sky. Sorry, camera crew. That one was okay over there, actually. Oh, really? Yep. Cool. Well, let's see if we can do a super steep landing. You see, I'm gonna slip, 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 reverse thrust, and stop it right where you want it. And guys, that was a pretty rough landing, but at the same time, that was like a 14 foot touchdown. That's pretty dang good. I could do a lot better if I was really trying hard, but we're a minute and 20 over. And so we aim to get you one more flight as the sun crests over the hill for a beautiful sunset touchdown and go. Because look at that windsock, guys. When you get nights like this, you have to take advantage. And that's what I'm telling you. If you're the type that waits until weather is like in the 60s or 70s, you're gonna miss, especially if you're in the Midwest like us, if you're in the upper Midwest, even worse, 
you're gonna miss like a third of your year, okay? You gotta get out there, you gotta fly. And by the way, I think I owe you guys, should we do, are we gonna do a dead stick, you think? Or what do you think? I think we kind of might owe them a stole takeoff here. Okay, so forward thrust, stole takeoff, full throttle, get up on the mains and there it is. So as you can see, it does pretty dang good in the stole performance. That'd be a short takeoff or landing. And just out of the throttle, but not dead. Love that, that light on the leading edge, it looks so sweet. Makes it look ultra realistic. And guys, you may have noticed I didn't click any trim in here, okay? This PA18 1.7, it's just drooly and beautiful. I love it, it's one of my favorites for being an otherwise pretty cheap plane. And all you gotta do is put a 620 in there because here's the thing, this thing already has the reflex. So the stabilizer is already built in there. Now you can bypass that if you want. Oh, I guess it's gonna be out of power now. So we're gonna land it right off road, right there. Sorry guys, it's out of view, but uh, I promise you I didn't crash. Let's go look, I'll show you. Just cause truth, truth in Brian Phillips RC, you see I had the rudder there, throttle cuts on, this thing has already stopped and it's sitting. I know the shape of the land because I cut the hay back there. And so I can get away with landing with no visibility. Now I wouldn't recommend doing that, but I'm hoping it's not tipped over and caught on fire and blowing up. Uh, but on that downhill pass, it was definitely dead. And I realized it about the time I had no chance of recovery. You guys see? You guys hear it beeping? It's beeping, yep. So now what I really think we should do is before we go any further, I want you guys to hear this. That's the noise it makes when it's dead. So, you know, might wanna stop at your timer instead of going three and a half minutes over. And what I was thinking is we almost never fly down here. Um, but what I was thinking we might do is we might fly down here for just a different vantage point soon. Uh, we have another battery, do we? Uh, you might. Oh yeah, right there. So we're gonna show you loading and unloading the battery. Obviously it's not crash, that's always, um, let's just say the way it really was, I was lucky. <laughs> but I'll pretend it was on purpose for the show. Well, it you was said dead stick, so. Yep. Now let's talk about how we set up the thrust reverse. I promised you that. Here is where I disconnected my mode PPM, which is right here, okay? Mode PPM is now disconnected. So it is now locked. And then all I did was I ran this yellow cable here that comes off of the throttle plug that goes into the reflex. I just stuck that into the, the signal pin, which is the top pin of channel five, okay? So now the radio setup part, that's super annoying, I'm gonna stop that. Okay, so all I did on the radio setup is super duper easy, this is disconnected by the way, is I went in here and I went down to system setup, I disconnected RF, I went to channel assign, and then instead of gear being assigned to uh, the gear switch, the A switch, I switch the gear to the G switch, which is over here. And so I always want to reach for the G spot when I want to switch things around. Is that what we do? Right. So when I pull this toward me, it goes to thrust reverse and then it goes to thrust reverse again. Now I reserve that for muscle memory because I do a pilot fatigue setting on jets, EDFs if you will. And then this is also reverse, but it's controllable. Now I don't do a, pan, a pilot fatigue, which is where it goes full thrust immediately, regardless of the condition but notwithstanding, of course, throttle cut does work still. We'll show you how to do that on an EDF jet that has thrust reverse if you wanna know how to do that. And then there is one other setting that you have to do to make it work properly. And that is if you go to select, highlight it under digital switch setup, go ahead and uh, exercise your switch. And then you can see position zero is plus 100, position one is minus and position two is minus. And that pretty much gets you where you need to be so that your thrust reverse works. Now, just make sure as with any other prop work that you're careful not to put yourself in a compromising position. And, uh, you know, if you're in any doubt, just go ahead and pull out the one two millimeter screw and undo it with the screwdriver you got in your hand. Take the prop off. If you're in any doubt, guys, don't get hurt. Don't be a statistic and definitely don't send me pictures if you become one. Okay, so 2200 4S, nothing special here. FMS usually calls out 35C packs, but I just wanna point out that these are 30C packs and we never have problems. This one's a little bit toastadelic. You wanna to touch that? Oh, yeah, it's a little warm, it's not hot. So no. it's not like I was pushing it super hard, 
But what I want to do is I'm, I, I want to bring you guys over by the pond. We'll probably fly over there. Um, I've only crashed one plane doing that so far. Right. So we're going to try to do it again today. Great. Um, but as you can see with our little shelf liner trick here, it works really nice to hold that battery in stable. And I do have this annoying Velcro here that would probably work on this, but this, this is a battery we got specifically for the F-14 from E-Flight because when that thing came out, you cannot have a puffed battery. It will not fit in that thing. And so they've been really good batteries ever since for a bunch of other planes. But I don't know if you guys remember this, when they were coming out, they had a special discount. Look, we have a, a giant animal attacking us here. Yes. She thought she was safe from the planes down here. Yeah, she's not safe from the planes. There's nowhere that's safe from the planes. So guys, on Brian Phillips RC, we try to show you the uh, whole exciting experience. And yes, you may have noticed a couple of shorts that are coming out. The shorts are not going to take anything away from our long format content. While I've got my knee so close to this prop, I'm going to just double check. My timer's clear and my throttle cut is on. I already trust this plane. And so I just also want to point out that this has an XT60 connector, okay? The XT60s work fine with the IC3s, but it is a little bit harder to plug in. And then also keep in mind this data line is not going to do anything for you on an XT60. But like I said, if you swap out and do a different ESC, just keep in mind, you got to take the front off and pull everything out that way, okay? That would be if you went to do a smart ESC, which would be from Spectrum, and quite a little bit more expensive, to be frank. So let's drop that back on there. Now, also, thinking about the way that this plane performs, I love flying it. I love flying planes when it calms down and you've got this beautiful spot. You guys probably don't see this very often, but we have this areas where we're down um, out of the wind, even on a windier day, if it just happens to be calm today. And so I love flying from different vantage points, but it sometimes doesn't work good for filming. And so we wanna just show you this, if you guys haven't seen. We'll probably fly just a little bit up here, and then we'll go over by the D6 dozer and show you where the pond is, so you can get a feel for that. If you're brand new to Brian Phillips RC and you don't know what the heck I'm talking about, we're building a pond right now, okay? So, with respect to being an off-road plane, let's go ahead and take off from right where we are, as though it was a real plane. So I'm gonna turn on my takeoff flaps, shut off my throttle cut, and now I'm gonna go ahead and just keep it on its mains and turn it around. Now this is pretty tall unkept grass because it's a hay field mm -hmm. actually. Okay, so full up elevator. I'm gonna see if I can get it to spin around. Oh yeah, it's gonna spin around. And then I'm just gonna go in here like bush style, get hard on the throttle, a little bit of aileron to keep it flat, and there it is. So it's flying just fine. Now out of the takeoff flaps. We're gonna go over the top of the new tree line. That's actually an old tree line there. Take off flaps now to slow it down just a hair. And I'm gonna do an inside pass here up by the junk pile. Yeah. If you guys live on an acreage, you guys understand what I mean. There's a junk pile at every acreage. Okay. Now we're just gonna slowly work our way over. Try not to do anything too exciting for you, camera crew. So if you guys are brand new to Brian Phillips RC, this is what we do. Even with the dihedral, inside out loops are no problem. Okay, you coming? Yeah. Okay. Out of the throttle now. And this is what's so fun is when you're in one of these, this is what we call our bowl here, guys. So take off flaps. A Little bit of slip to get that plane where I want it. Okay, to the middle. <laughs> Cat's watching it. Cat's probably going to try to attack it at some point. So I am in the middle of what I would call kind of like the butt cheeks or the knolls here in the bowl. Hard on the throttle. Keep away from the stall. And you can fly in pretty dang tight spots with this plane. Now the camera crew is going to get a little bit sick to her stomach as I spin her around. Let's go up to the top just a little bit more. Okay, okay full landing flap so I can slow it down even more. You guys, I love flaps and it's not just for landings, folks. It's so you can fly tight terrain. Because you can really kick that rudder around and fly it like you stole it. See how tight we can make those turns as I approach the tree line? You don't want to hem yourself in beyond what your plane can handle, folks. But all I'm going to say is look how tight this area is and we're just having no problem hard in on the throttle and take off flaps now instead of landing flaps, okay? So landing flaps now for this turn. Lots of rudder, keep that nose pointed where you want. 
right over the camera crew-ish area. Going up and around the junk pile, out of the flaps now. Respecting the airspace here. Upside down flight and coming around. Full landing flaps on the way down to slow it down just a hair so we don't overspeed and rip our wings off, which wouldn't happen. Tight. Okay, now let's go over here and show them the bowl that we're creating for water. Let's go fly by the D6 and buzz the tower. What's going on, dude? Oh yeah, you're not working, I see. That's what I figured you were doing, just sitting there being heavy. Okay, look at this, that's gonna be a damn good place for a runway, a damn runway. You see the cat wagging her tail? Yes. Okay, full landing flaps hard on the throttle on the top of that turn, right over the cat, oh yeah. <laughs> she's freaked out for that. She thinks she's being hunted. Okay, about 14 steps toward the house. Good job. Good enough. <laughs> she finally gave up. She's freaking out. Okay, we're going to go up. Oh, I wanted to go between those trees, but I didn't quite have enough to get her done. Okay, now we're going to go in through this opening now. So this opening used to be one of the most tragically difficult places to fly. And now we have a huge opening. And I can just see what's gonna happen is I need to go between these two trees here. Slowing it down, <laughs> I need to. Obviously it's a life or death thing. Right. So the FAA is like, did you need to go through there? Obviously, right overhead or close I should say. Okay, take off flaps now, hard in the throttle to get it moving. It was about to stall there. Okay, I'm gonna go up and around, lots of rudder, keep that nose where you want it, and then flatten it out, bring it down the knoll, between the butt cheeks. Whoa! Okay, out of the throttle. And we'll just bring it up and around. <coughs> Excuse me, right in front of us, you good? Mm -hmm. Watch out, cat. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Colby was freaking out about that. Okay, let's go over by the septic lids. There's nothing I love better than hanging out with the exhaust fumes from our poop. You know, which is hilarious, guys. If you live on a farm and you know what it's like to empty or clean a septic tank, I'm just going to tell you something. We had to open it up because we had an alarm go off once. It was just an error. But it uh, smelled better than my garbage can, which uh, says something about our garbage. Did you reset your timer? Yeah, I did. Okay. So two minutes and six left. Flying into the wind, full landing flaps. Oh yeah, we need a little bit more elevator correction if we were serious about this. Okay, hard on the rudder, hard on the rudder, hard on the rudder. See how tight we are guys with that? Keeping the wings flat and still doing like a 200 foot flying area. It's just like no problem at all. Right through the opening folks. So much fun. We're gonna bring you down here and just show you what it looks like next to the edge of the pond because it's gonna change here in the next few weeks. Like this whole area over here where I'm flying, it's gonna be dug out. Not all of it, but uh, I hear manned aircraft, do I? This area is gonna be dug out right here, okay? Where I'm flying. And then over here, it's gonna be dug out. And then where I'm flying over that little area with the flags, that's gonna be where we're gonna move a few more trees because uh, people that fly RC love trees. Evidently, I'm the only one. Because <laughs> you wanna know how many times people have asked us to cut trees down? I'm like, why would you cut trees down? Trees are beautiful, they give a backdrop. I would have a million more trees if I could afford them. Full landing flaps, let's slow it down. Four set nose down, four set nose down, four set nose down. I barely have enough elevator to do it. Going on the inside, you good? Mm -hmm. and just crosswind of our damn runway that doesn't exist yet. Hard on the rudder, hard on the rudder, get that nose around, there it is. Could have just put it down perfectly. This is where the damn runway is gonna be, right here. Look at all those nests up there in that tree. I know. I wonder if it's squirrels or if it's eagles. I think they're squirrels. Okay. It'd be a lot cooler if it was eagles. It would be. Okay, I'm gonna do a landing right toward us. Okay. Okay, you good? Mm -hmm. A bush landing, bush. Okay, so that's our timer, guys. 
coming up with seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And if you guys are brand new to Brian Phillips RC, we just want to thank you for being part of this extravaganza where animals are constantly attacking us, especially cats. And we have all these different fun places to fly. In the next two years, the landscape's going to change a little bit. There should be a road that continues to a helicopter pad there, a helipad, about where the garbage pile is. And then that road is going to turn and it's going to go down the dam runway and the dam runway is going to lead to what hopefully will be a real full scale hangar right there. And that's going to be 60 by 80 by 20 if all goes to plan. It might be bigger, like if I win the lotto, but probably not. And uh, that building will be tucked in tight to the tree line because we have to build a pad right there. Mm -hmm. And so out of that will come real airplanes and then they will fly from the runway that's going to be right there. You can see it's pretty flat at the crest of the hill, but it's still not flat. Nope. And so that's part of the reason why we keep talking about this. Hey, cat, get away from there. What are you doing? See cats? No, don't do it. Get away. By the way, cats do like to chew on foam. So if you have cats, make sure that they don't go up and nibble the tails or sharp edges. They like to nibble them because mm -hmm. like it makes their teeth feel good or something. Um, so keep an eye out for that. That's part of the reason why we have so many planes in our basement. Well, they were going to say so many cats. No, no <laughs> that that's was an right. Accident. So anyway, guys, if you haven't heard the story from Brian Phillips RC yet, that's what we're working on right now. And it's going to be big. It's going to be beautiful. It's going to be amazing. But it's also going to be very, very freaking expensive. And so we are already, you know, doing this. I'm going to give you one more shot. That, by the way, that thing over there, it's, it's a dam. Uh, but that's going to be submerged. That's called a silt pond up there. And so the water that flows from the 40 so, 40, 50 acres that flows under the road is going to catch in there and then the silt will catch. So we don't have to get a $200,000 bill to silt out a pond like this when yeah. it's done. Because that's literally what they were telling me it would cost to do that. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to do, do that. that. Um, and we don't want to do that to the person that buys this property from us when we're dead and gone because we'll be here till the day we die, obviously. Because no one's moving all yeah, of your stuff. No, yeah, I'm never moving my stuff. And then who else wants a runway in their backyard? Oh, yeah, everybody watching this video right now. So if you're watching and you're curious, stay tuned. Seriously, these things take years, but that doesn't. The PA-18 is an amazing economy option that's going to get you a big scale flight experience without blowing the budget. And I understand that some of you are probably thinking, well, you just described a very expensive budget for that project you're talking about. Yes, yes. But you know what? Here's the thing. I love aviation. I love RC. And trust me, my family puts in so much time and effort that you wouldn't believe it. It's one thing for me to do it, but it's another thing for my entire family to do it. And so that's why you always have me asking, hey, support us. Here's how you can support us, buy planes. Here's how you can support us, smash the like button. It's pretty easy, costs nothing. You know, click the bell for notifications, watch the videos. We do long format content so that we can help bring people up to speed because I love this hobby and I love aviation. And that means that occasionally we do ground vehicles because I love aviation, obviously. That's why we stopped filming so we can look at airplanes. Who else does that? We do that because I love aviation. So at the end of the day, when you guys get on this channel and you think, man, that looks like a lot of work. Yeah, it mm -hmm. was. It is. And we're not done. <laughs> We've got like another I'm probably close. half decade to get where I want to be. And that's just the crap I've thought of so far. Oh, geez. <laughs> exactly. So guys, when you do click on the links and you buy stuff like this, you're not helping to build a 24 foot deep pool, although that would be really cool and good for Mike. But at the end of the day, what we're trying to do is we're trying to expand RC. We're trying to grow it so that it drives down the cost and it improves the quality all at the same time. And you know how you do that? You sell a crap load of planes and you get people flying that weren't flying. And then that breeds more interest and more people come to the field and more people fly and more people get obsessed just like Brian Phillips RC. And I'm telling you, it's a lifelong addiction. And I know that's a bad word, but it's a true word. So let's fly over this pond for a second. Okay. All right, here we go. So takeoff flaps are on currently. This is gonna be a short sortie, so you need to be on it because I may be dead sticking it. Okay. All right, here we go, here we go. All right, so getting hard on it, there we are. 
So guys, I'm flying underwater. There it is. Okay, so guys, this is literally where it's gonna be. Yep, we just dropped an elevation about, I don't know, 20, 25 feet. This pond is gonna be about 25 feet. That dirt pile is not going to exist. There's gonna be a dam where it was. But as you can see, I am flying under the water. It's very hard to get scale, and that's part of the reason why I'm doing this right now is because I know you guys are curious and I would be too, because this is gonna be one of the coolest and most neatest projects. This is, you know, we don't do fastest, best, cheapest, but we do big and huge tires and the like. Woo! Take off flaps. I was totally gonna to bite it in that D6, I thought. Okay, hey, how about we land right where the cat is trying to do her thing? So you could come back about 20 steps for me. Watch all the roots though. Careful. Just move back, move back, move back, move back. There it is, guys. On the ground. Don't even need thrust reverse for that. But the truth is, we love doing this stuff. We love doing it right here. Yes, there is a cat that's taking a dirt nap right there. And uh, she evidently wants to swim with the fishes. <laughs> what so the so heck? What a goof. It's like, did you think this is a perfect time to bathe? So guys, a little insight into Brian Phillips RC. We'll just give you this quick. We try to do this as part of our videos. This is what we call a second thoughts or a revisit. And uh, at the end of the day, you know, this is just, I hope that for some of you, we're, we're not just gonna be, you know, like we're, you're living vicariously through us. We really want you guys to be doing stuff crazy like this too. Cause like who does this? So they can fly float planes. We do it. So. And my wife puts up with it, which is a miracle. <laughs> it is. So happy Valentine's Day. I'm sure it's late by the time you're seeing this. By the way, guys, it was like the other day. So like if you're watching this now, it's too late. Yeah. Go you get more flowers. Yeah. It's yeah, it's already too late. So dig a pond anyway. Um, and snakes in the basement. A beer truck might get you tomorrow. So start living today. That's kind of the usual big ticket items on Brian Phillips RC. Is that usually what we <laughs> That's say? That's about all, yeah. I want to fly more, but the thing is, I just wanted to mostly show the people this while it's, um, you know, it's, it's, they're going to dig out over there. Okay. So it's going to be like about a third bigger. It's going to be about 25 feet deep at the deepest point. And, uh, we're super excited. The stake here in the middle is where it's going to be the deepest. That's where they're supposed to dig down. Yeah. And, um, as you can see from our really wet winter, we've got tons of water that came in here. Yeah. And that's why it's called an ephemeral stream. And I might be saying that slightly wrong, but ephemeral, that's right. ephemeral. And there's a, there's a little dinky rock. We found a few of these while we've been digging. And when I say we, I mean the guy that runs that. Yeah. And his son that works for us, which is doing, he's doing a really nice job. And I kind of wish he had his other D6 here so that, what are you doing, cat? So without further ado, we don't want to be too distracted by the cat, but the cats are fun. And if you really get right down to it, what do we do? We film videos of me flying airplanes and building airplanes so that we can draw you guys into the hobby addiction. <clears throat> and uh, we want you right here with us. And so if you guys are brand new and you're just coming in saying, what the heck is this guy doing? Just stay tuned. There's so much more right around the corner. And I'm serious, this is not just a teaser. This is like our real life every day, all the time. And it's always, it's growing. It's, it's this is, I guess this is called like an aerodrome. And I didn't even know that was a thing like last year, but I knew I wanted it. And we went to one and now you want one. Well, that one was like 400 acres. Yeah. This one's slightly smaller by like hundreds of acres. Yes. But that's okay. Who's counting? So guys, if you have questions, leave them in the comments below. We're gonna keep you in the fold on this project because we know you guys are curious what's going on. Uh, just as we finish off the video, I'm gonna go down the hill and hopefully not fall. Uh, just to give you some more scale. And yes, I want to keep flying, but the problem is I can't fly with dead batteries, I've been told. And that tree has reminded me, and other trees have reminded me yes. too. Okay. And so guys, without further ado, we're gonna sign off so I can get a new battery and keep flying for Brian Phillips RC. And hopefully this footage wets your whistle. Thanks so much for being here with us. And definitely smash the like button, click the bell for notifications, and buy the stuff from the links. You'll help fund insane projects like this that no other moron would ever do. But I will. And that's why you keep coming back for more. So thanks for watching. And I apologize to my wife for all the uh, heartache that I put you through. Um, and that's uh, because...
because of this addiction I have. That's all right. Maybe one of these days you can line up one of those, what are those things called? An intervention. intervention? Yeah. An RC intervention. <laughs> <sighs> I'll be busy flying, so you just do it without me. Okay. We'll let you know how it went. <laughs> all right. That's all you get. Thanks for watching, guys. PA18 1.7. Awesome. PA18 1.3. Less awesome, but really good still. And if you get that, you can get in and ready to fly. Mm -hmm. Okay. So just thinking of a 1.7. That is a lot more plain. It's like double the size. All right. And if you want even more, we got those too. Check it out at brianphillipsrc.com. Search by type, brand, and all that good stuff. So much more right around the corner. Thanks for watching. All right, guys. I'm sorry. A little bit more because I wanted you to see the lights in the darkerness. Okay. So <laughs> take off flaps. Here we go. Some more bush flying from Brian Phillips RC. Landing flaps here. Guys, if you're not used to flying tight circuits, then you probably don't fly like I do. Because I learned flying this way and it's challenging and it makes for an exciting experience, folks. But all I've got to say is I love flying around stuff. You can come down to my same height so I know where you are, mm -hmm. that'd be great. I don't like all the stakes, but let's be honest, guys, the stakes are temporary. They're gonna be gone as soon as we're done with the pond project out of the flaps all together. We go back to takeoff flaps. We'll kind of go above and then around. We'll just go right over the uh, transformer. And we'll just come in right by the camera crew. You good? Mm -hmm. We'll go around here, go over the trampoline and then go through the next hole. The next available hole. That's what we usually do, right camera crew? Right. Okay, hard on throttle. And we'll do an inside pass between the spruce full landing flaps here, slowing it down. Man, that thing has got so much ballooning. I really need to adjust my ballooning. This is the killer of all planes right here, guys. It's just a different vantage point. So you guys can see what I'm talking about. Normally, we're flying from a completely different vantage point, and so you don't even get to see that. Here's the cherry that we're always talking about. That's the cherry that we're going to move that I just flew kind of around. I give a wide berth because that, that tree is usually invisible to me as I fly, okay? So as soon as it flowers and blooms, and then we end up with leaves, I love that tree, but it's moving anyway. You guys see this hole I'm gonna hit? It's not a big hole. That's what she said. Okay, so that's our grading limit or some such thing. And now we're flying about where the water would be. So if I was float plane equipped, that would be a landing zone. And by the way, these are things that we are literally considering right now. Like, is there a landing zone? Where exactly do we have room for trees? Where do we think we can fit all this stuff? Because this is what we're literally planning out right now. And so I'm just trying to make decisions. The landing flaps here, we're gonna go in between these trees here. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that was close. Ah, I wanted to get, I wanted to get tighter. I wanted to get tighter, that folks. Was pretty tight. Did you think so? That's what she said. You did literally say it, though. So I can't say it. Yeah, that's kind of like when I cheat. You say that's what she said. And up and through. So guys, when you're out flying and you're thinking, hey, that would be fun to fly around. Just remember, that's what we do every day on Brian Phillips RC. Okay, going inside, you good? Mm-hmm. Okay, right here, inside. Yep. By the tree line. Then into the water. Splash! <laughs> I feel like when you fly over the eagle killing zone from our normal runway spot, people can't see like half the tree because it's down the hill. Yeah. So you don't realize, I feel like when you're flying from up there, it's like, you mean oh, just how we'll just it really don't is. hit the little tree. But then when you're flying down here, you're like, oh. Just how gigantic it, it is. really is. Who needs master bedroom windows? Um, me, please. So guys, that was probably a little bit tighter than I wanted it to be, but uh, still got it in. Okay, let's go a couple steps over here. We're gonna go around the cherry, take a hard left, 
Flatten that plane out, Brian. Bring it in like you mean it. Going in right between. Those LEDs are so nice. Okay, I'm gonna cut my body so I can see what's going on. Okay, right over the bushes. You can't see the bushes, guys, but the bushes exist. I'm gonna go out to that lot marker there. That's a grading limit, I think. That one is, yep. Yeah, so I'm gonna go around it. Guys, if you wanna know, I've had a couple of guys that have mentioned something about how they think I have such exceptional depth perception. I kinda don't. It comes from practice, folks, and crashing a lot. <laughs> pull dance, pull landing flaps. Here we go. Slowing it down for the camera. Left hand turn, inside route. Oh yeah. Lots of rudder, getting her flying. Around the low point. We're gonna go take off flaps only right over the Frisbee golf basket and then inside pass, you good? Mm -hmm. Watching out for the new, new tree. And by the way, if you guys are unfamiliar with your terrain, the best thing you can do to get familiar with it is walk around a bunch and fly planes and stuff like that. And we love, we love flying these areas. It's just, we honestly don't do it that often. And that's because it's just a lot more scary. Okay, tight turn. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're good. The other thing too is I know some of you guys like to fly tight terrains. And so you understand what it's all about and how difficult it can really be, but then also how rewarding and how cool it is. Up and around, full landing flaps on the way back down and lots of rudder to the left. And there we are next to the cherry. That's why you gotta have flaps, folks. Flaps open your flight envelope like you would not believe Yeah, one minute 26 left. Okay, full landing flaps. Let's slow it way down. I'm gonna bring it down. I gotta really force it down. Okay, right over those black walnuts. And then inside pass as slow as we can get it. Right next to the grading limit. And then down the shore. And then into the bowl. The new bowl. And we're gonna bring it around, avoiding the new trees. And then down. And then up. You guys see the shadow? What helps, what helps a lot is when you have a shadow, okay? Shadows help with depth perception, but you know what shadows also do? Shadows make it hard to film. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're gonna bring it in here by the cherry, just over the black walnuts. Just barely made it. Okay, good. And then, and we'll just plop it down there for a quick sec. So guys, we love flying these tight terrains, but just wanted to show you how incredibly helpful it is to have lights. Lights make the difference, especially when you start getting clouds that are about that color, mm -hmm. where it's kind of like whitish, and you just like literally can't tell what's going on. So we're gonna do a couple more bush takeoffs, and then we're gonna be done. But this is where we've been doing grading the last year or so, rather the end of last year. Get it up on the mains. That's our timer. Well, landing flaps. And kids watching this at home, don't forget, when you're the one that pays for the windows, you get to fly close to them. When you're the one that doesn't pay for the windows, you get to let your parents tell you where to fly, okay? Okay, I'm gonna go up here and corkscrew it, corky screw. There we are, and then back and down. Okay, you good? Mm -hmm. Over the left. The left from someone. Someone's left. Someone's left. Not Got necessarily it. yours. And then down the runway. So much fun, guys. So much fun, folks. If you aren't into RC aviation, you're missing out, guys. Life is short, and then you die. And on the way, you'll pay a lot of taxes. So what I would suggest is maybe save a couple bucks from the tax refund and get yourself one of these PA-18s, 1.7s. You will love it. I'm gonna try to land down the runway. I'm gonna go over the top of the cherry. You guys look at the cherry now. You see, where is it? The cherry is a disappearing act. Ah, where are you, cherry? I know where you are. Right where I wanna fly, you jerk. Okay, here we go. Oh, no. We can't end it like that. You see what happens? That's why you put squishy tires on FMS. Seriously. 
Did you see my waggle? Mm -hmm. I did that on purpose. You know why? Let's no. land right at our feet. Okay, are you good? Mm -hmm. Okay, you wanna go back about four steps so I get flat land. Right around the chariot, there you go. Perfect, you're fine, you're fine. Lots of aileron. There it is. And then onto the runway, guys. Seriously, eat your heart out for off-grid flying. Okay, I'm, I gotta do it. I can't not take off here, can I? Yeah, that's... I mean, you could not take off there, but... Nah. You won't not take off there. I won't not. It's dead. <laughs> slip, 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 slip. At least you're going the right direction this time. <laughs> there it is, guys. Chase it. Force the nose down. And then ground loop viciously. Guys, it's beeping again. <laughs> Strangely enough, since I ran it out of batteries. Okay. Uh, I don't want to say famously, but notoriously, I do run planes out of battery. And that's just part of what I do because I love flying so much. And when I get an opportunity to actually do it, I eat it up. And there's another plane over here. Looks like our ceiling is getting closed in. That's why everybody's so mm, low right now. Low. But yeah, there he is. So guys, we've already done the extra or whatever you want to call that thing where I tell you all the things to do. But check it out in the links of the video description below. The PA18 1.7 is a really great option. Honestly, if you're looking for something really similar that's just a little bit more money, PA, uh, PA18 1.7, then I would probably go to the Ranger 1800 is awesome, okay? Really good plane but you're not gonna off-road it like you do with this. I mean, you might, but you have to have pretty smooth ground still. And yes, you could take that and do some big, fat, squishy tires, but you're gonna have to modify stuff because it has a spring-loaded oleo, much like other planes would be jealous for, okay? So, love this plane. If you're flying off a good paved runway, Ranger 1800 is where it's at, I'm telling you. And by the way, if you got the budget for a Carbon Z uh, Cub, you will love that plane. You will love it till the day you die. 2.1 meters of pure delight. It's an amazing plane. Obviously, it's not featured in this video, but I don't live in a vacuum. And when we're on second thoughts and revisits and stuff like that, we don't mind bringing up a bunch of other planes that are really close. But guys, if you want to learn to fly, you can get the 1.3 and are ready to fly. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to just tell you this. If you know you're going to be addicted, like you've already done a couple of small warbirds and things like that, and you haven't already built in your budget, to do something like this, just get on with it already. Even if you end up with the Futaba in a couple of years, you end up with a JR in like 10 years or whatever it is, it doesn't matter. You need something to get you from here to there and you don't wanna be buying them every time you need an extra channel because you're gonna get killed on, on dollars and cents. I'm gonna tell you, just find one that's gonna meet your needs for like four or five years, which would probably be something like the NX10, which is a considerable jump from the NX8, admittedly. But the NX8 is gonna leave you hanging when you need it most. And that is when you get up to a jet with retracts and air brakes, like the F86, which is glorious. So I'm just telling you right now, because I know from personal experience, I had a DX18 that I was running well before we ever worked with Spectrum, just to be clear. And I never used more than 10 channels. And I use that like once, okay? So that being said, I was pretty inexperienced and brand new pilot, and I'm a lot more experienced, and I have hundreds of planes now, and helicopters and all sorts of different things with quads, VTOLs. I even made a thing that went on a roof so I could like recover a plane that had an FPV camera that would pitch, pan and tilt, so I could go up on top with a stick of shame and like recover planes. Like that's literally a thing <laughs> that I made. I mean, it was all hot glued together and pretty janky, but it, we still made it. All right, guys, sure. Brian Phillips RC, that's all I can squeeze in to such a short video. And if you like long format, you're in the right place at Brian Phillips RC. So we appreciate you guys supporting us like you always do. Buying the planes, Patreon, PayPal, YouTube members, we appreciate you too. We don't, we don't give you a lot of love just because the truth is, you know, it is the best thing you can do for getting communication with us would be to go Patreon style. Um, and the fee structure, just so you know, it's about double at YouTube. I mean, I'm just telling you because if I was giving support to somebody financially, I'd want to know where the money's going. 18% roughly, plus or minus a few bucks on pay Patreon and then about 30% on YouTube. Yeah, they keep 30% of your money. So if you wanna do the Patreon, it's a lot more expensive than nothing, but it's a lot better than nothing, you know, being transacted. So what we'd rather you do, is just buy an awesome plane and you love it and then somebody else writes a check. So it's a win for everybody, including the RC community. Keep this ecosystem pumping by buying amazing airplanes. Remember, Beer truck could hit you, snakes in the basement, YOLO.
or what else? <laughs> what maybe let's what not other add cliche that. <laughs> thing? YOLO. Yeah, I just, I'm just way too old for crap yeah. like that. Um, but just remember, when it comes to Valentine's Day and Brian Phillips RC, we're here to get you in the doghouse. You can't tell them about Valentine's Day afterwards. <sighs> I'm talking about 2025. Oh. Put it on your calendar now. Put it on your calendar now. See, okay. you'll be so early, you'll get extra points for that. Maybe not. <laughs> Probably she'll just know you missed it. But that's okay, because I've been married a long time and I miss it all the time. Um, so anyway, sorry about that, Hunters. It's okay. All right, thanks for watching. Come back for more.